morning everybody. Well, spring is coming and I'm happy to see the sun shining today. The tulips are just peeking above the ground and some crocuses are out and it feels pretty nice. And this, this is the total of all the Phalaenopsis orchids I have. We are going to discuss today uh, humidity, difference in pots, and uh, what you can do to adjust your humidity. And uh, uh, one problem that I'm trying to solve, and uh, a new, I'm going to uh, have a little experiment, that's what I like to do. And, Thank you for joining me and uh, wow, we reached 2,000 subscribers. I, I never, when I started this, thought this would happen. It's funny, I thought there might be, you know, a few local people and friends that want to see how to do their orchids, but I sure thank you for joining me and uh, I try to keep you in touch with anything I learn new and what I found works, so we better get at it. Okay, so um, I always say weekly, weekly, and the Orchid Society says that about your fertilizing, weekly, weekly. But when you say that, you also have to remember that one of those weekly, weekly waterings is not any fertilizer at all. Uh, I use such a little amount of fertilizer that it probably wouldn't hurt me to uh, continue and just do weekly, weekly. But I like to take that one day and flush them out really good. So what I do is, I haven't done my watering yet, but what I will do is run the water through them very... Uh, 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 <laughs> can't get the right word out. <laughs> um, you know, let it flush right through, just running your water. If you can run water, if you can't, then I would maybe have my sink full of water or my bucket and have a container and just keep dumping it, dumping it, and letting it go back into your container. And as long as your orchids are all healthy, you shouldn't be worrying about transferring diseases. But if you have one, if I have my sickly ones, or ones I'm worrying about, I usually leave till last, and I water them last. And the rest that all look healthy, I don't worry about, and I've never had any trouble. So, um, in my sink, I measured it, I had a, a gallon, we do distilled water, and we run it into a gallon glass container. So I thought, well, I always say I put one or two drops, and that is wheat, into my sink. Um, I could probably put like three or four drops, because they say on the, on the bottle, they say seven drops um, per liter of water, which is four cups. This little measuring uh, it holds about six cups. I measured by cupful. And what I've done today is I've put one drop in here. It's not for all the orchids. It's for a little experiment I'm going to do later. So, um, this sink holds five gallons of water. I usually only fill it to the four level. And so if I'm only putting two, uh, that's, that's very, very weak. I could do three or four. I mean, when you can put seven drops into four cups, this is weak. And weak is what it should be. It doesn't need a lot. Since I've been fertilizing, I have noticed a big improvement. Because they're only in bark and they're not got monkeys and... Uh, birds flying around and different little crawly things. There's nothing fertilizing them. So I found they really do like that little bit of fertilizer, but weakly. And then flush it out because the salts that could build up, just get it a real fresh 
and then back to weekly weekly. So the other thing, um, most of these are doing really good. The purple one here in the front, that's my oldest orchid that my daughter bought and has a very long monoclonial stem. I just barely got it in that pot when I repotted it, but I didn't want to cut it off. And someday I may cut it off, but it seems happy. And this has been in bloom since the middle of December. And as you can see, it's still giving through, these buds are still opening. And it is in the west window. And uh, the west window is starting to warm up quite a bit. And uh, a month from now, they'll probably be on the patio, but for now, they're still there. I do not have a curtain on close to the glass that I can bring down to shade them. So some of them do get the signs of a little more light where they got purple edges. This one's always had a lot of light. It hasn't hurt it. It doesn't seem to mine and it's healthy. But um, you don't want to, if you put your hand there and it's starting to feel hot, that's why we put that little shelf in front of our window so I can bat some of them off. So um, most of them, I have all sizes of pots. Um, if, if um, this is a funny time of the year, so you keep your eye on your orchids because what's happening is it's warmer in the window, it's warmer in the room in the daytime, the sun is shining and heating it up. But at night here, we're dropping down to freezing. Lots of mornings are still, all the roofs in the neighborhood are full of frost and and the top of the glass solarium was all slushy ice this morning. So we got the furnace coming on at night and we got our heat coming in. Maggie, she's supposed to have her barking collar, but it isn't working. So we're going to hope she's good. You be a good girl. Come on. You come up on your little chair and be a good girl up here. Come on. You know, will you show everybody how nice you can be? Sorry about that. There's always something. So, um, that is why, okay, uh, it's a day before watering day, and you can peek down in your pot. Now, how dry is it? You can even take a little bowl and dump half of the bark out and see. Because my suggestion is when it gets to be weather like this is... You've been watering once a week really good. And maybe the little pots like this one or, or even these. They, in the middle of the week now, I take my watering can on Thursdays when I've been doing it because my watering day is Monday. And I give them about a quarter of a cup each. For sure a quarter of a cup. Because that holds them to watering day, and the smaller ones will dry out quicker. You have to remember that we are in bark, which is a dry media. We have some charcoal. And uh, it's very good for air. You can't get rot very easy because it's going through. So we just want to make sure they're getting enough water, and the small ones are a little more susceptible. And uh, the big ones in the big pots and like this loves it because it's a bigger pot. It holds that moisture for the week a little longer. And I find that with all my bigger pots. That's good if you're living somewhere like this that um, they may dry out too fast. But if you're living somewhere where it's very, very humid, um, our humidity, when it was pouring rain for a couple days, went just above 60, 63, 64. But then when it's nice for a few days, it'll hang around 50. So <clears throat> um, humidity is not too serious. But if you're living somewhere where there's lots of humidity and you're worried about rot, because this way we're not going to get rot is you're going to need uh, 
charcoal or bark, but you're going to need maybe a smaller pot so it dries out quicker. Not a pot that will hold more humidity in. So uh, with me, I like it if it holds a little humidity in. Um, but if you're like in a such a humid place, then you want more, uh, you want a dry media like charcoal, uh, uh, lava rock or bark and nothing in there that's too moist and you want lots of air holes to let it out and, uh, and good drainage. Um, if you're somewhere that um, is very, very, very dry, then probably the other way you'll work, you're, uh, you're trying to keep the humidity more like this with uh, uh, bigger containers, but still the holes because you want the water to go through when you water. So anyway, <laughs> I think that's good on that subject. And uh, before I start watering, I wanted to explain. Now, this is the orchid that was in this cone pot that I painted. Now I'm going to come and show you the inside of this pot. I wasn't too worried about it. Um, I'm going to just take that out. I stuck that in the other day. But that orchid has not been been doing good and if you have an orchid that you keep looking at and it's been I tried other things I tried giving it some more water I pulled it out yesterday I said this is enough it's got a little leaf coming and the little leaf doesn't even look that healthy so I dumped it out onto the cookie sheet and um, there was no rotten roots there was no new roots, there was no new aerial roots, and one sick new leaf. So I'm blaming the pot. And this can happen sometimes. What can happen is something about your pot is, is disagreeing with the plant. Now the inside of the pot, this is the one I painted, and I'm going to keep this pot, but I'm going to have to put something else in it. And um, if you can see, the inside had this black and I never sanded it all off. Plus there was an inside core if if you looked back at when before I painted it that was also black. So I don't know what this pot was made of. So what I'm gonna do is because I can't so luck like my plastic cone and not find it so healthy. I'm going to buy a small road comb for this instead of having this in it. And I'm going to find something else for this later. Put that there. And uh, I'm going to paint a new pot and do a small one of these for in here. So I'll get a plastic road cone and that'll be an upcoming project. And uh, I want to show you. Um, this is the orchid, I called it Tequila Sunrise, and uh, it is the orchid that, all, it came with lots of bubbles, and some people were saying, how come the leaves are all bubbly? I bought it all bubbly, but I won't buy a bubbly leafed orchid again. I'm going to show you this new leaf. So if I can... Get a close up. There's a new leaf. Now, whoops, this is typical for me. Now, there's some funny little lines on it. This is not a healthy new leaf. So, I repotted it. I soaked my bark. I repotted it. <laughs> this is a pot that, um, it looks a little funny, but, um, Jack, um, he has acetone in a bucket. So if we have a, something plastic that's deteriorated and we're going to throw out, he throws it into the bucket of acetone and it slowly turns into kind of a mucky soft stuff. He tests it first because acetone is in 
nail polish. And if he puts a bit of nail polish on a piece of plastic and it looks a little sticky, he knows it will, uh, the, the acetone will eat up the turn it plastic back so that he has something to work with. And this is a homemade old plastic pot made from old plastic that he's been throwing into acetone. And we've patched so many uh, plastic things that have broken, uh, lots of things with this, and then I just paint over it. So now I'm going to do my regular routine and see if this orchid picks up. But like I say, it had this all these bubbles in its roots, and people were saying, how come the, le or the leaves... How come they're like that? Well, they're still like that. It's not healthy. I don't know what the problem is, but uh, there's always something to keep us going. So that's one thing on my agenda that I'm doing. And before I start watering, this is the little, the little uh, stem I cut off in the last video. And I've decided, the flowers have died off and I've trimmed them back. Now I put one drop of fertilizer in my uh, watering can that holds about six cups of water. And I use the 10-15-10 the for flowering because I'm curious if I can... Um, it's still trying to um, bud. I mean, most people would probably throw it away. I'm going to try and see if I can in some way without using kikey paste, cakey paste. But it's still got some buds trying to come. It's got a little sprout there. It's just curious. So I'm going to see if I can kind of force or make it do something like form a cakey. <laughs> I'm probably, probably a little silly, but... So, um... The uh, Monet pot has been in bloom since December. Still got some more coming. These two stopped. They're resting. And uh, this is the orchid here that <laughs> all died off but the two leaves and it's coming in spite. I thought I was going to lose it. Um, I'm lucky. I didn't. I'm happy about that. So I'm looking forward to blooms on this one soon. And uh, Moon Glow, of course, um, she's got some new little buds coming. And her keiki is now in the nursing station above the Mr. Fogger. And uh, so it's doing good. And Purple Rain, all these have been flowering since December, so how good is that? And um, if anybody's watching from Salmon Arm, British Columbia, this is the, the orchid I repotted at the garden show. And uh, it has not lost its flowers. It's beautiful. And it's still, still um, right here. Right here. Sprout. And there's another one on the other side. There goes my dog back there. Okay, so um, I'm going to be watering. I'll just show you that the, usually what I do is when I'm using fertilizer, which isn't today, I'll put one or two drops in the sink and I do my uh, flowering orchids first. So I will use the 10-15-10. Um, but when I do the ones that are growing leaves or aerial roots, I'll use a weekly. <laughs> I will use the um, let's say there's 15, 15, 18. 18 is your last number uh, for all over health. This is good. It has to be mixed into water first. And uh, and this one I use a lot in the summer. Um, it's a 25-10-10 or 15-5-5. And I only use these two when um, I'm really trying to get some green and healthy roots. Because they're the stronger nitrogen which that work on the leaves and the roots. 
So, other than that, I'll show you the two little slipper orchids. They are still okay. I miss them every morning. I miss, miss the surface. I was going to put moss on the top. I haven't. They see this. Let me see. This is the one here that I dropped on the floor. It seems fine. And this is the one I just repotted them both. I used small containers, and so far we're good. I have some small vermiculite. I wish I had had some bigger and bark and uh, charcoal. So that's what's in there. So thank you for joining me everybody and if you have any questions please uh, comment and uh, I'll get busy and do my watering and then go out and enjoy this beautiful day because I know I got seedlings going in the greenhouse they will need water today so thanks again and thank you for um, all the wonderful people that are leaving comments. Bye for now.